Bye. What is up everybody? David here for another vloggity vlog and I hope that every single one of you is having a wonderful day. And today we're gonna talk about something pretty simple and that is the Pro Charger. Again, so there's been some frequently asked questions about the Pro Charger system and I've had the system for about a month now, believe it or not, time flies. So we're just gonna go through some of them and talk about it. So first things first, how does it feel? Okay, well, I am still on the can tune out of a box, but it's been data logged and everything else. I'll make sure to make a video about how to data log, by the way. I'll do that, I promise. I haven't really had any issues with it. The car drives, it's safe. That is the most important thing. I could go get a dyno tune, I could do all this, but right now, it's not a priority to me. I really don't feel the need to. And a ton of people are like, oh, well, are you gonna, you know, dyno it to get the horsepower or whatever? And, you know, I'm like, Maybe? I've come to the point where, you know, the car is faster than it was, and I mean, a lot faster than it was. And basically, that's good enough for me. You know, the system did its job. In other words, my booty dyno definitely says it added 100 something horsepower. Yes, I could get more horsepower if I went to a dyno. Yes, I could do all those things. But the thing is, is I'm keeping the car the way it is. I'm keeping it like this for now. I know you're gonna be like, oh, it'll be so that last time. Well, no, seriously, seriously. I pro charge the car and it runs good and it's reliable. Don't touch it. The good thing about the Cantoon is that it does adjust to things like elevation change and that sort of thing. So if you really wanted to, you could drive it across the country. It is such a safe tune, I don't even want to risk it. How's the rest of the car reacted? You know, how about your brakes and everything else? Well, the brakes on this car are the Brembo package from the factory. So my front brakes are big and beefy and they're good, they're fine. Rear brakes, eh, they're not so great, but it stops just fine. I mean, you didn't add that much more weight to it. You did add a lot more horsepower to it, but it holds up just fine. I've done some back roads with it, done kind of my R&D sessions, if you know what I mean. Maybe eventually I'll upgrade the rear brakes, but since I don't beat on it every day and I'm not tracking the car, once again, it's fine. Next is the thing that people just don't want to let go, and that's E85. I don't want to go E85. Look, E85 is incredible. It's an awesome system. Yes, you can do flex fuel, I know. Yes, you can do all these things, I know. The main reason why I am not doing it is not because it's bad, it's because where I am from, it is so hard to get. When we did the E85 video explaining what it does and everything else, it, we used Cody's Mustang as an example. But the thing about Cody's car is he's closer to an E85 pump than I am. The nearest E85 pump to me is like 55 minutes away. There's only three pumps I know of in Virginia and that's the closest one. So think about it. Your gas mileage is gonna be less than half than on pump and you're driving all the way there to get it, and then you drive all the way back and you just burn it all off again. Like, there's no point. And also, I know that once I go 85, I'll never wanna use pump gas. <laughs> I'll be like, oh my God, I feel so much slower now, and I just don't even want that mentality. I don't even want it, so I'm making myself stay away from it. It's not hating on the 85 at all, it's just the convenience, the mileage, and everything else when I have something that is a daily, essentially. I mean, think about it. When you put it in context and say it out loud, you're whining that your daily only has 500 something horsepower. Oh, cry me a river. But speaking of that, the gas mileage. Now, the gas mileage on the Pro Charger, when you're cruising and you're in six gear, overdrive gear, cruising along, your gas mileage is virtually untouched. It's really no different than it was naturally aspirated. However, in the city, it's worse. There's no doubt about it. You're stopping and going and stopping and going and idling with a bigger injector, your gas mileage is going to be worse. Let's talk about a big one, reliability. So right now I have, let's look. I need to look at my little info. Okay, so I have 1,808 miles on the system now, on this car. So two of those were road trips. One was to Virginia Beach. You might remember a guy named Brandon Gazanigo. He was on my channel years ago now. Well, he got married and he had a baby. So I went to go visit him and congratulate him. 
So, congratulations to you, Mr. Gazzanigo. You're about that family life. And then after that, I went to Baltimore and we did all the, the gray 240 things. Once again, that just shows how crazy it is that we put the system on and I was able to drive that far without any issues, knock on steering wheel. Speaking of that, now that I have 1,800 miles on the system, I'm going to have to change the oil in the supercharger soon. Well, to change the oil in the supercharger is extremely easy. All it is is you take the oil they supplied, uh, just a little bottle about that big that I showed you in the review, uh, install video, excuse me, and also they have a little line where you can drain it. And you just drain it, and then you just do the process over again. So after the break-in, which is this one, it's every 5,000 miles. So it's very convenient because you can pretty much change your oil oil along with your Pro Charger oil, you know, three to 5,000 miles, especially if you're using synthetic oils. During that road trip though to Virginia Beach, um, once again, some I didn't tighten something down enough and the bolts on the throttle body came loose. So I got on it one time and then I, was sitting at a stoplight and it was idling at like four grand. And I was like, oh my gosh. Literally didn't even have to touch the gas and the car was moving. Like it was just floating along. We pulled over. We finally got back to Brandon Gazzanigo's apartment, popped the hood. Oh, the throttle body was letting in air behind it, if that makes sense, because it was loose. Uh, going up to the Boss 302's intake manifold. Oh yeah, by the way, if you guys are Mustang people, which is totally fine, I have a Boss 302 intake manifold. It's not a Boss 302's engine. The Coyote and the Roadrunner engine, which the Roadrunner engine is the one that was in the Boss 302, are pretty similar, but the Boss 302's is stronger. Okay, but you can apply the intake manifold to the normal Coyote because the dimensions and everything are the same. I still don't know if I recommend boosting your daily driver. I, uh, I'm on the fence still because there's so many ins and outs and things that could possibly go wrong. Newer cars I feel a little bit more different about because they're ECUs, you can use stock ECU, um, you can do various things, it's pretty safe as long as you have a really good tune. When it comes to boosting older cars, sometimes I'm not really sure because almost all my friends have, well, <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. And I am more than happy with it. The car is plenty fast enough, trust me. Going on a back road, you feel like you almost have too much horsepower. And that's a sign, yeah, don't turn it up. If you want a car that doesn't want to do just one thing, you know, straight, then you don't need a zillion horsepower, nor do you want a zillion horsepower. I mean, even on Tail of the Dragon, I think I had too much horsepower almost. It would have been much more fun in say a Miata or a Fiesta ST or something along those lines. It's a very, very intoxicating car. Uh, I mean, I can just downshift and go. Hooking. Okay, so hooking, unlike what just happened, <laughs> is actually usually not that big of a deal. Usually the car will hook, which is actually very impressive for these Mickey Thompsons, and because they have a pretty small sidewall. But also, it's pretty cold out today. So that's the main culprit, probably, of this event. So, but on, say, a 50 degree plus day, if I start driving a little bit, and usually I'll do like a, if I really want the car to hook, I'll just go into second gear, punch it a little bit, spin them a little bit, it warms them up, go into third gear and or second, and it'll hook every time. It's pretty incredible, especially with the 373 gear ratio. All right, guys, I want to thank every single one of you for stopping by and watching this little Pro Charger review redux and talking about the FAQs of this system. Thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to subscribe if you want, and I will see you guys later, and take it easy. Have a fantastic day. Vlog.